Hi, welcome to Open Day, a day that's all about tomorrow. This course information is about Bachelor of Business. I again thank you for all attending today. And I'm Dr. Ahmed Fedos. I'm the course director for Bachelor of Business. First of all, I'd like to make an acknowledgement of the country. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which our Deakin University campuses reside. Now, for today's session, um, I'm going to cover uh, a few aspects, important aspects, which will add value to your um, the information that you are seeking for. So we're going to start about what is business. I'm going to give you a bit of course overview and the structure. Talk about employability outcome as a result of undertaking this course. Um, the travel opportunities that we provide as part of the course and as part of the Deakin experience. And then the graduate employment, I'm at, I'm much more in detail. Uh, the different student services that we offer, uh, Deakin Cloud, uh, and then choose the, why you choose Deakin. And of course, we'll have a, a question answer session in the live channel. Now, as I speak, um, and, and right after this session, you will have opportunities to attend a, a live question and answer session. You can also post any queries through the live chat as well. Um, so having said that, let, let me first talk about the business landscape, which is changing. Um, and it's very important for us to understand as a prospective business graduate or a business student. And I always take on this, um, uh, this quote from uh, Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba. He focuses on an interesting aspect. Um, he, he raises the question of that some of the uh, basic level uh, or entry level position and the tasks that, that, that are involved, these will be overtaken by because of the automation, because of the AI that we are seeing the emergence of those uh, aspects of, uh, of the advancements of technologies. However, what we need is that we need expert people and we need the right skills who can um, get into more complex interactions or complex engagement with your clients or with your customers. So you would need some form of soft skills. By soft skills, what I mean is the, is, is the skills of communication, uh, skills of, of interpersonal communication uh, to global citizenship, to work ethic, to networking, uh, uh, to, to problem solving and analysis from more of a insightful and more of a deep complex thinking. So these are the skills what, what one would require to equip themselves for the future. And if you look at some of the more deeper statistics, Two thirds of the jobs will need high level of soft skills by 2030. Um, in fact, demand for soft skills is greater than supply, which is excellent because if you are a person with, with a degree, a business degree who have um, acquired the soft skills necessary, your demand will be much higher than there is supply in the market for employers. Uh, uh, so of course, there's an, uh, there will be uh, sustained growth in the employment opportunities. In fact, 25% of employers are finding difficult to fill an entry level positions because they simply lack the, the prospective graduates simply lack the soft skills. So it is important uh, to meet the changing landscape that we will be seeing in, in our lifetime and going forward uh, to address, uh, to, to equip ourselves with, with soft skills. We went to the industry and asked the employers, what do they look for when you, have, when you are a graduate, a business graduate? Uh, and and th these were some of the interesting feedback that we received from our industry partners. Most of them <laughs> have highlighted that uh, be beside your university major, which is 16% of uh, importance for them, um, if you look at this pie diagram, interestingly, it's more of the employment opportunities uh, that are related to your course that you have undertaken during your course journey, including any form of internships or even volunteer experiences. And of course, with that, uh, what could add value is the extracurricular activities, like for example, uh, joining a commerce society, uh, doing something else uh, beside your curriculum. Uh, uh, and, and, and I think that also um, helps you to get a very fruitful journey during your course. And then we see the emerging business areas that needs to be addressed. Uh, if, if, if I look into this, so 
one of the things that we have to see from ourselves as a perspective of a, of a business graduate is, is the different fills that we can go into in, in the future. And those niche fills or specialized fills, which have clear indication of growth opportunities and, and, and those which will, will be having a sustained demand over, over a long time. Yes, the structure might change or the nature of the work within that sector might change, but these are clearly the sectors which, which, gra which graduates will be sought after. Now, these might include, uh, for example, event management, areas into project management, entrepreneurial thinking. A number of uh, graduates have expressed their, uh, like prospective uh, students or even our past graduates have said that they want to set up their own business. They want to go into venture creation. Uh, so you would need that entrepreneurial thinking. Not only that, even if you're working for an organization which are more innovation uh, um, focused, um, and, and I think given the circumstances and the current situation, we all have to be innovative. So entrepreneurial thinking is something that really needs to be uh, looked into. Then we talk about the retail and supply chain sector. That is something that will grow in future. And that, that's an area where we would need much more uh, skilled people just beyond, uh, let's say, customer interaction uh, tasks. The retail and supply chain major is a vast world, and and we do need complex uh, uh, like complex skills and problem solving skills and soft skills uh, in order to meet those uh, requirement in in the and the retail and supply chain sector. And the other thing that you all we we are all used to it is the social media and 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 the especially the internet. Um, and advancements of it. Uh, so that's something that a sector that will keep on growing as, as we see. And then of course, uh, one of the most trendy topics um, and, and the trendy debate nowadays in the world is about sustainable development. And as you as you'd understand as a Gurdjian or as, as, as a prospective student that uh, climate change and, and, and concern about the, uh, about the sustainability of, 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 of the world um, is, is a big factor. And in fact, if, if you look at some of the job perspectives, there are areas which, which really uh, directly looks for uh, managers such as sustainability manager. So there is, this is a quite uh, established emerging areas that needs to be addressed. Now, how, do I, how does the Bachelor of Business at Deakin University responds to these uh, changing market demand? Um, this, this little diagram uh, shows the basic fundamental structure of how we are addressing the needs that I have raised for soft skills to emerging needs. And of course, also the uh, integrated learning experience or the work integrated learning experience that is desired by the industry or your or any prospective employers. So we will give you um, experiences of soft skills through different subjects or units, as we call. Uh, you will get some business basic acumen or bis basic business skills uh, that every, every business student needs to know. And, and, and those are fundamental and very hard skills. And you will be supplemented by the business capstan unit. What you do in that unit is after three years of your degree, you take this unit and you try to apply all the learnings that you have gained in your degree uh, to a specific industry problem sol solving situation or through a simulation based study. And then of course the work integrated learning, which is an internship um, and, and could be in different type or different forms, which I'll go into a bit. Um, that, that, that will, uh, uh, that is a compulsory part of this degree. So unlike any other business degrees, uh, the work integrated learning at the, in the Bachelor of Business at Deakin is compulsory. And we want to ensure that our students uh, before they graduate have that related experiences uh, before they face the real world. And then of course you would uh, do a specialization uh, focusing on an emerging business areas, the areas that I was uh, trying to address uh, in my earlier slide. Now, in terms of the 2020 um, offering of the Bachelor of Business and Minors and going forward, um, so currently we have eight credit points major. So each of your specialization is of, uh, which comprise of six specialized subjects or units, plus you'll have to do a related work integrated learning experience. Uh, that means uh, you'll have to work with the industry based uh, something that is related to your major and plus one business capstan, uh, which every major students have to do. And these are the available majors right now. So from event management to organizational side to people, project management, retail and supply chain, digital and business communication, entrepreneurship and innovation. And this is the one latest that we added from this year was the sustainability and development. Now you do have a space for electives. By electives, I mean that you can take uh, 
subjects from anywhere in the in the, in the faculty or even beyond. Uh, however, some students prefer to do a minor beside your major or your specialization, and that, that that's basically shared from our Bachelor of Commerce degree. So you could choose a minor uh, either in business analytics, uh, economics, finance, or marketing. So someone could do a major in let's say event management and and do a minor in marketing. Uh, I think which which gives you more of a lateral skill to present yourself and give yourself a bit of uh, competitive advantage uh, over your uh, peers. Now, in terms of the entry, in terms of the Bachelor of Business, we have two associated courses. One is the core Bachelor of Business, which is a three years full-time or part-time equivalent. Uh, it's offered either in Bird Campus Waterfront or you could be an online uh, student, which we call the online environment. We call it the cloud or the cloud environment. So the ATA requirement for the Bird Campus is 63.2. Uh, the waterfront is 60.05 and the cloud is 62.3. Uh, the four years full-time or part-time, the Bachelor of Business or the Bachelor of Arts, that's a combined degree. <laughs> now, some students prefer to do have more of a broader lateral skills and, and they're more interested in both the worlds. So they're interested in business as well as the arts world. And, and so they want to combine and that's why we created this opportunity. So you could do a four years Bachelor of Business or Bachelor of Arts. It's again offered in Bird Campus or Waterfront Campus or, or Cloud Campus. And the ATER is uh, 60, around something like 65.9. Um, for the Bachelor of, if you want to enter the Bird Campus, if you want to want enter the Waterfront Campus 64 and the Cloud um, is, it is still unpublished because this is a newer degree that we have offered. Now, often I do get the question that why are the uh, ATAs different dif depending on the campuses? Uh, first of all, to address that question, the the education experiences, regardless you're in Cloud or waterfront campus or bird is exactly similar. So same lecturer is, is, re, uh, is I guess, responsible for all the three campuses. Uh, the only reason we try to do this uh, variation in the ATER is because we have got the strategic positioning where we could do this and, and, and given the government regulation and compliance of it, so we are able to vary that offer. But then uh, having said that, the education or the quality of education of the teachers that you'll be getting or the instructors that you'll be getting are, are same regardless you are in Bird or Waterfront or, or the Cloud Campus. And feel free again to join the live Q&A session right after this. If you have any questions, feel free to chat, post something and, I, I will, and my colleagues will help you to address that. In terms of the <laughs> entry requirements, so that's the, for the direct school leavers. Um, so entry for school leavers will be based on, of course, with the VCE certification or equivalent. Um, units three and four, a study score of at least 25 in English or 20 in English other than the EL is required. Applicants will be selected in accordance with the ATAR for that year. However, I have to <laughs> emphasize that there is opening also for T3. So you could apply for T3 or, and of course, there you could apply for the T1 2021. So there's T opening in T3. So we do at Deakin, as you could have already experienced, or if you do a bit more research or from my information, there are three, trim it's a trimester system. So if you want to enter in, in, in November, uh, the entry in T3, please feel to apply. Um, and, and of course, beyond the school leavers, non-year 12 requirements, you could come from different pathways. So a certificate four in related discipline, a diploma in discipline or 50% completion of a discipline. Uh, you could come through a pathway of successful completion of relevant study equivalent to at least two years Deakin University units at an accredited higher education institute. Or you could provide other evidence of academic capability that's judged to be equivalent to a foundation program uh, that has to be approved by the faculty board um, or, or relevant work or life experiences is something that also you could uh, reflect on. And how do I apply? So applicants for trimester one can be made directly, or if you want to apply for T3, also get in touch with your admission office. And how to, and again, same for the non-school livers, please uh, directly apply to the applicant portal at deacon.edu.edu. The applications are right now open. And with that, so there are different pathways also to enter uh, the, 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 or to enroll into the course. So you could transfer from a Deakin related course later on. You could transfer from in between campuses, of course, subjective to uh, different regulations and compliances. And then of course you can uh, uh, have a pathway from qualification from a Deakin partner. 
And then of course, qualification from TAFEs or uh, different RTOs. Uh, so these are different pathways, which would also enable you to uh, undertake a Bachelor of Business or enter into a Bachelor of uh, Business degree. Now, let me go a bit more into specifics of the Bachelor of uh, Business, the course structure. So as you can see here, we have 10 core units. If you could recall my first slide, I was talking about the business acumen or the business basic, uh, basic business offering or the hard skills. Those we reflect through the 10 core units so that everyone, regardless of your major, within the Bachelor of Business will have to undertake these 10 core units. In your, as, you, as you go into your second year, uh, you'll have to do some uh, specialization. And, and as I have reflected, there are eight specializations right now in offer or majors. And then of course, we'll have, you'll also have the six elective units, uh, which, which, is, which is fantastic because it makes your degree flexible and you can undertake any units or subjects from the university uh, that you prefer, or you can pre uh, saturate four of the six units as your minor. Uh, so if I go more into specifics, as you can see, this is a typical structure for a student who's trying to, uh, who prefers to finish um, his or her degree within three years. So in trimester one, um, of, uh, so you can see in year one, in year two, we have got the business acumen or the core units. In year two, you start slowly undertaking your uh, different majors. Uh, including your electives. And then uh, by end of year two in trimester two, let's say you will, you can undertake uh, work integrated learning or you can just defer that to year three as well. It, it is flexible, a student course advisor will advise you on that. Um, and in year three, you can do, uh, again, you need to complete your major majors as well as your general electives and then undertake that business management capstan unit where you try to um, demonstrate what you have learned through your three years to a very uh, proximal or very authentic or close to the industry project. Uh, in terms of the Bachelor of Business or Bachelor of Arts, um, it's a four years duration as I was highlighting because it combines, so you do 16 credit points from, from, the, uh, from, the, batch, uh, from the business. Um, and, and 16 credit points from the arts. So because of the 16 and 16 combination, you will do eight core units and eight credit points of, of major from the Bachelor of Business, which leaves <laughs> 16 credit points from the arts. So two majors with eight credit points each or one major and plus one elective. So basically you're combining 16 subjects from the business world and 16 subjects from the arts world. And, and what it does, it, it really gives you a lateral skill, um, a bit more broader breadth skills in terms of uh, equipping yourself to the arts sector or even to the business sector. One of the other thing that I was highlighting in my um, in the beginning of my presentation is that employers try to look again for your extracurricular activities, your industry or or, or variety of ex real time experiences as you are studying. So uh, so there are are different uh, the, so the, and that we take technically call it the work integrated learning experience. And that could come in the form of cultural engagement. For example, you could do some volunteering, you could do an internship, which could be paid or unpaid. Um, let's say, for example, you're already working full time in an industry, you can, you can do uh, industry based learning. So you can actually do an un, not related directly to your work, but a, a bit unrelated to your work, but in the same organization. So having a, a discussion with your work supervisor and as your, your deacon academic um, instructor or lecturer, and then you try to decide on a real time project that you'd like to solve. Uh, you can also take consultancy experiences. So there are a lot of opportunities at deacon where, where you can get opportunities to take some um, I guess, consulting experiences. So for example, if you want to open your own business, there is, uh, so you can actually work for, uh, in, in a, it's called the Spark. You can actually work for real-time um, entrepreneurs who are trying to help create businesses and, and, and do a, take a consultancy role. The other thing that you could um, take is study abroad. Uh, so, and, and we highly encourage that students at least take one unit, which is, um, beyond Australian sex, uh, setting and, and, and because that gives you enough good experiences of, of an international um, experience and, and a flavor of out of your com comfort zone and, and which you can something really highlight in your CV. Uh, when I talk about the travel the world, of course, as, as uh, the borders opens up, in your uh, degree time, I'm sure you will have the opportunity to take these opportunities and um, you could take short-term partner program, you can take international volunteering opportunity, uh, faculty-led study programs, and, and some of these are uh, funded 
by the university. So you're given financial support. So it's not much of a money from your pocket. And of course, it depends on students' time and availability, but um, it's, it's highly encouraged that you take one, one of the tours. So for example, as you can say, there was a Tokyo Will Work Integrated Learning Study Program in, in Japan in 2019. And, and students really love it. And, and they really say that this is a lifelong learning. They could um, relate to their real life work experience after their uh, graduation. Now, in terms of the career outcomes of the Bachelor of Business, uh, from our past experiences of those who have graduated or from the industry perspective, you can build a career in retail and supply chain events. You can work in the government. You can work for project, being a project or analyst. You can work as a small business or entrepreneur. A, a number of students love this course. The reason is it gives you a major in entrepreneurship innovation. Not many Australian as, uh, universities, as I know of, offers at an undergraduate level a, a complete major or specialization of how to uh, create your own venture. Uh, you could do a people management major, which might lead to a staff development um, a sector in the HR sector. Um, you could work in a sustainability or responsible business planning, um, um, and, and people have built their career on that. And then, of course, the digital communication, which is very much um, a touch point that we every day see, and, and, and workplace requires that. I've just taken an example, for example, a, a project manager. So if you, have do, if you have done a specialization on project, uh, you could you could actually end up in a career and and as you can see indicative average salary of 130 and of course it might vary but over a lifetime you can see the um, uh, the type of task that uh, or the majors that will directly lead to some of these um, work opportunities um, event management I know there are uh, because of certain circumstances but then when they come back the event sector I, I think they have to be resilient they have to be much more innovative in their thinking and and that's that's exactly what what the degree will help you to achieve at least as well for both the soft and the hard skills with the work integrated and the capstone learning to face more complex interactions or, or bring a change or giving a innovative idea this 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 the d can accelerate um, now if you're a vc student uh, current vc student you can actually um, undertake some units while doing your vc and that counts so it, what it does it it boosts your ata um, it gives you earn in your university credit, study at no cost, easier transition in the university. So please do um, uh, explore the Deakin Accelerate opportunities. So you can either take it in either Cloud, Bird or a Geelong. And then also entrepreneurship innovation program, which offers the opportunities for you being already a VC student and, and taking our Accelerate opportunities. Now, <laughs> With, with the courses, what, what, what a student would require during the journey of the course is the student's services. We have got great services. In fact, Deakin has been uh, ranked uh, as one of the top universities to achieve high, very high level satisfaction among our students. Beyond the course, I think what, what, that, what that record, uh, I think what contributes to that a great achievement for us is that the student services, the amazing student services we have. So you've got student clubs and societies um, once you're, you're, you're about to graduate, there are services which will help you to equip uh, better and, and to address yourself better to the real world. We've got medical centers, the student hub. Uh, there are a lot of uh, student societies. Um, then we've got something called the Deacon Talent, which again helps you to prepare for the industry. Uh, we've got counseling services and then, of course, peer mentoring or peer assisted study session. So, so someone who is already in the second or third year, they would like to become um, help uh, students uh, through a formal service. Uh, so if you have any questions on assignments or if you have any qu clarification, they will, you can directly set up an appointment and take those type of services and which has immensely helped our past graduates to improve their learning curve. And, and so these are the, some of the students uh, study support services, regardless you're off campus or on campus. So for example, maths, extra maths help to exam, uh, preparing for your exam, English language development, assignment types, new to Deakin, to even a writing of simple assignment tasks. So, and, 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 and explore, and as you explore more of this open day uh, virtual tour and, 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 and other settings, I would like to, uh, you to explore these opportunities further and I, I feel free to ask questions about these support, amazing support services that we have. Uh, this is about Deakin Talent as I was writing. So this is one of the additional support services and it's a very important thing because what it does is it helps you to, um, I guess, build your CV 
um, helps you to establish, um, get, build that a, a bit more stronger bridge. In fact, a stronger bridge uh, when you're trying to go and, and place yourself in the industry. For example, resume and job ab application uh, review, uh, for example, career coaching, uh, they will uh, or organize different career events. So for example, graduate fairs, um, then again, how do you succeed in your career resources to talent development programs? And it really helps because when, when, you're, when you've done your degree and you're trying to go for an interview, you can take the resources, you can take their one-to-one -one coaching. What, what re that really does is it helps you to uh, be more confident when you're facing the industry. Even, even if you're doing an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial pathway, uh, as I said, beyond the Deacon Talent, the, the entrepreneurship hub or the different Sparks type of program that we have uh, would help you in, in establishing uh, your career goals or, or give you more confidence when you're trying to face the industry. Now, of course, as, 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 as you would know that one of our strongest aspect of the DNA of Deacon, as we know, is the, um, the 40 years of experience we have in the cloud teaching or the online environment. Again, this is uh, the only, it's, de it's designed as a blended learning. That means uh, you're not treated differently, either you're an you know, online student or you're an on-campus student. The on online materials are actually offered uh, regardless you're an online student or you're an on-campus student. Um, and and, and it, it just, the, the different platforms or the different advancement of tech. In fact, Deakin is one of the leading uh, institution in the Australian sector uh, to be upfront and, and, and to make it much more engaging and interactive for our, our, our students. So for example, if, if when you're, uh, will it, be enrolling? So this is a Deakin Sync, it's our online learning portal. So you can, you can see that this is just an example that I was trying to draw on that you can see the different services that you'll, you'll be getting. So you'll know about your units, you'll know about where you're enrolled, where you're heading towards. And then you can check your email, you can log into the library, you can quick uh, get a quick access to the unit sites. And in, in terms of your individual subjects, you can actually log in uh, to the to the to the sub different subjects, and you can see here, uh, for 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 example, the different resources or discussion. This is a this is called a surface that you'll see, a visual surface that you'll see of your subject site, and and th this is uh, delivered regardless you're a cloud student or an on-campus student. So the t and you'll get your lecture recording regularly, your seminar recording. You can attend. You can ask any questions through this forum to your uh, lecturers within 24 to 48 hours. Hours, they'll respond back. There are also interactive sessions. So there are a variety of opportunities to get uh, real-time experiences uh, through these cloud support or online support that we offer at Deakin. Now, before I start wrapping this presentation, why choose Deakin? Um, one of the reason is it's it's ranked about one one percent of the universities worldwide in terms of and it's it's one of the top fifty young universities in the world and and within for the Bachelor of Business you'll be part of the Deakin Business School it is a highly prestigious school and and it's evidence from the factor that we have got the AA SESB it's a North American accreditation and the prestigious European Equus accreditation which clearly gives a signal to yourself as your confidence booster and to your prospective employers that you will have got the highest and the most standardized and, and the most, I guess, the most respectable educa business education and responsible business education that one could achieve. So that is one, one, one aspect that, that is going to really help you and to decide. And, and, I, and I hope you, this will convince you to, to, to enroll at Deakin. Before I wrap it up, please join us at the live uh, Q&A just following this session and I'll be there and with my different colleagues. So feel free to ask us any question um, and, and I would like to encourage and also take the opportunities of the other sessions that is being offered uh, through this virtual, um, uh, virtual uh, I guess the open day things. And uh, please feel free to come and join and, and feel free to ask any questions. With that, again, I sincerely thank you for attending and, and, and listening to this uh, presentation. And I'll see, see you all soon um, in the live Q&A session. Thank you. Thanks.